China plans on testing its own planetary defense technology in 2026. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on ScienceGet, we're talking about China's controversial and potentially counterfeit DART mission. In 70 days, NASA is going to be testing DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test. The test will involve crashing a spacecraft directly into Dimorphos, a small asteroid that orbits Didymos, a slightly larger object. Before impacting with Dimorphos, DART will separate from Lycia Cube, a six-unit CubeSat. A CubeSat is a miniature satellite with a form factor consisting of 10 centimeter cubes. They have no more mass than two kilograms per unit, and Lycia is designed to take complex measurements of Dimorphos to determine what effect, if any, the DART mission has on its orbit. And China is planning to do the same exact thing on asteroid 2020 PN1. This particular asteroid is not very large at all and weighs in with a diameter of 0.039 kilometers. That's just 39 meters. So, while categorized as potentially hazardous, this thing isn't even large enough to be considered a city killer. By comparison, DART's target asteroid, Dimorphos, which has a diameter of about 170 meters and is large enough to be considered a city killer, 2020 PN1 isn't much to look at. The term potentially hazardous is also a little misleading for the average person to hear, because it immediately conjures anxiety-inducing doomsday imagery. But despite NASA and every other space agency on the planet searching vigorously to find potential doomsday rocks, none have been found. At least none on a collision course with the Earth. Obviously, if asteroid Vesta ended up hitting the Earth, it'd kill us all. All potentially hazardous means is that the asteroid has a higher probability of eventual impact. That could mean that we'd have to wait hundreds of years for an impact in some cases, though. And it does not indicate how much damage any given object might do, when or if that happens. China's DART mission will also deploy a smaller satellite to monitor the results of the impact test, too. I guess we can just call this the X Game 360 of the space industry, eh? Yes, at first glance, it looks like China's asteroid kinetic impact defense test is just a cheap knockoff of NASA's DART, but is there more to the test than meets the eye? In the arena of the international space race, China is pretty much on an island. More often than not, they choose not to collaborate with any other countries in their spacefaring efforts. The Biden administration has openly criticized China, and there's been some growing anxiety in relation to concerns of intellectual property theft and aggressive behavior in space. That quote is from Bill Nelson, NASA's current administrator. See, I didn't make an offhand joke about China's counterfeit gaming consoles for nothing. We're not going to get into all the scary politics and whatnot. We're a science channel after all, and like Star Trek, we want to focus on how humanity can evolve and grow into its best self. So while there are real concerns that China has been getting leaked information about technologies developed by NASA, China is still interesting to watch. Recently, they released a quote-unquote white paper outlining China's plans to construct a near-Earth asteroid defense system. This is rumored to consist of a combined ground and space-based monitoring operation that would catalog and study hazardous near-Earth objects. Deputy head of the Chinese Space Administration, Wu Yanyua, notes that this system is intended to foster a shared future for man. Kind. All I have to say to that is, yikes. Bill Nelson did not sugarcoat things for Congress back in 2021. China's been extremely aggressive with putting landers on Mars and the moon, and make no mistake, they will be putting humans on the moon in the near future. Which leads me to a positive point in all of this. Let me ask you a question. Is Star Trek's utopian vision of a united spacefaring humanity truly a pipe dream? You all know I'm a massive fan of dystopian and Lovecraftian science fiction and horror, but if I'm honest, I love Star Trek for its uniquely positive vision of humanity's future, in spite of how horny it sometimes was in the past. It's often been said that if it had not been for the Cold War, we likely would never have landed on the moon. And yes, we did land on the moon. After the conclusion of the Apollo program, humanity has not dared to venture beyond low Earth orbit. There's been plenty of speculation... <coughs> thank you, computer. ...about why that is. And I believe that there is no easy, one-size-fits-all answer to that question. But there is a silver lining to all of this, which Bill Nelson clearly laid out for Congress. This aggressive competition should be the ignition switch that lights a fire under NASA's ass. My words, not his and get us back up there so we can finally start boldly going where no one has gone before. 
It is my sincere hope that more countries exploring space means that more people get to see our planet floating amidst that vast ocean of nothing, and that that experience starts to put us on the path to a brighter future. But what do you think? Does China's space program scare you? Why or why not? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And remember to do all that algorithmic jazz and check out this video on NASA's DART mission too while you're at it. Hey, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboy.